Hello, my name is Valeria Frunze and I am running an agency that is specialized in property development, property investment and portfolio management. And I am making small videos for those who want to start investing in real estate and they are collecting data about this industry. Today I will speak about rentals and rentals is the most significant part in this business because it gives you an idea of how much your property values and as well it helps you to understand what can be the return on your investment if you're planning to invest in uh, real estate. So I will speak about rentals in the residential field because there are several type of uh, fields in real estate. We will talk about residential, not commercial. So I will talk about uh, five or six type of rentals. There are, there are tens of type of rentals. We will speak about only the basic ones. We will talk about uh, long-term rentals, short-term rentals, and some, in some cases called Airbnb rentals, uh, serviced apartments, executive apartments, um, student accommodation, and maybe vacation rentals, but I mostly classify them in the same as holiday lets. So long-term rentals are the traditional rent that you normally, uh, you know, uh, get for, get, go for, is the tenancy that you get uh, six or 12 months and uh, it has a, a fixed price normally calculated or appreciated uh, on a value of what the market offers. So, for example, when the, the agent will evaluate the rental income on a long-term basis, they will check uh, what is the area, uh, what type of rental the area offers, and then they will uh, mix and match and uh, appreciate the rent and fix it in a way. So there are caps on that particular one. Of course, uh, most of the countries, they have a free market, but normally uh, in high, uh, in developed countries, there is a cap because there is a lot of, uh, there is high demand as well as high offers. So you want to put your rent as uh, closer to the market price as possible. Um, so uh, short-term rentals is something that I'm mostly specialized so sometimes I've been called the queen of Airbnb <laughs> let's say uh, because we had a very big portfolio on Airbnb until several years ago so I managed to learn all the tricks and bits about it as well as uh, struggle on a daily basis with the with the challenges that has to offer so the short let um, uh, rentals they're sometimes called Airbnb it's become became a very popular term the last five years because the Airbnb as a platform uh, is dominating in the market and in in the industry Airbnb is just a short let platform that you can list your apartment and rent it out on short-term basis so what that means that it means that you can rent your apartment for less than 12 six months or 12 months you can rent your apartment for two days or for two nights or one night or one week and so on so you have the flexibility to rent for as long as you want and sometimes i use i combine the long-term rentals with the short-term rentals so for example when the tenant uh, is um, leaving the long-term rental and there is a gap between the rental. So between the checkout of the long-term rental of the tenant and until we find a new tenant for that apartment, we have a void period. That's how we call it. So it's a gap or sometimes a couple of days, sometimes a month or two, where the apartment is empty. So in that, if the apartment has furniture and everything needed, I will list that apartment in that particular void period on Airbnb and increase the revenue uh, on that particular uh, unit. But it's not often, uh, it's not common, so not everyone use it because that makes it difficult with the viewing, for example. So if you don't have a long-term tenant yet uh, and you're listing it, your apartment on short 
short-term rentals, then you will not be able to disturb your guest in order to show the apartment to somebody else. So going back to the short-lived uh, short uh, apartments, they come uh, with a different set of deals. The rental income is normally higher than long-term rental, uh, in approximately with 30% higher, and sometimes the rent is even double, but it comes also with extra work and extra hustle as well. So it's a, it's a better revenue, better income, but also more work for it. So uh, for example, with long-term rental, you will just rent the apartment and you will just deal with uh, fixing and bits and pieces whenever it's needed. With short rent, uh, rentals, you need to have a cleaner and a handyman available 24 seven in case something breaks because you're offering literally a hospitality service. So if the boiler breaks and there is no hot water or if the, uh, the, the, the apartment is not clean enough and or you have to do the cleaning after the checkout or before the check-in. So if you're renting the apartment on short-term basis and you're renting it for two days or for one week, every time the guest is checking out, you will have to organize the cleaner to go out there and uh, sort that things out, as well as providing a set of uh, things that that apartment needs to have in order to tick the boxes on a hospitality service. So bedding, cups, plates, and of course, make everything sure that the guest is comfortable because you are transforming your apartment into a hotel service, literally. So when we talk about short-term rentals, it's a very big industry and it's worth millions. But um, it's not just about Airbnb. Airbnb is one of the many platforms that offer this service. It's just it's the leading platform and it has the insurance that it gives to every single uh, host. Um, together with Airbnb, you can list your apartment or booking.com, VRBO, HomeAway, TripAdvisor, uh, Home2Go, Stay Home, uh, One Fine Stay, Plum Guide. Uh, there are so many that I, I can't even remember them, but there are plenty of short term platforms that can offer the same services with different terms and condition, conditions. So far, in my experience, Airbnb and Booking.com has been the best and Airbnb offers an insurance up to 1 million. Uh, Booking.com doesn't offer insurance. So in case something happens with your apartment, uh, you can, uh, Airbnb will support you in fixing if it's the guests, um, if the guests produce the issue. Now what? Uh, so, um, service departments are similar as short let apartments. It's just that they are a little bit more pretentious. Uh, many times they have a, a concierge or a receptionist and they're mostly rented to executives or people that work in corporates, embassies and so on. They come also uh, as a enter in a hospitality part because it comes with bedding, pots and plates and sometimes even, uh, you know, a weekly cleaner and so on. Um, they are normally used a lot in big cities and areas around the embassies uh, so, or business areas, let's say. Um, fourth, one which is one very interesting and it's the term is used mostly in England but this type of rental is used all over the world so in England it's called HMO houses with multiple occupancy uh, in our countries they call it flat sharing so it's a home with many rooms and each room is occupied by a different tenant and the tenants are sharing the kitchen and sometimes the bathrooms. Um, this type of uh, rental is more of a budget rental. It also has high returns 
uh, more it's higher returns than long-term rental if for example you have a five bedroom house and you wanted to rent it between a, one to give it to a family or rent it to five different individuals um, the return on the investment or return income your rental income will be higher if you rent it to five different individuals and it's actually more convenient for the landlord because renting it to five different individuals is easier to manage it and it's less hassle when it comes to evictions which is a different separate theme that i will talk in a different podcast which is quite interesting as well it's very it's a very interesting thing thing to know about it uh, it comes to the risk assessment so uh, HMOs uh, are very very popular in big cities because main reason is because there is so many people coming to big cities and there is not enough uh, apartments available to rent as well it's it it offers a better price so it's cheaper than a studio it's cheaper than one bedroom apartment and uh, sometimes it gives the comfort of the person to have flatmates that they can communicate and interact in a way so it, it, uh, it has pluses and minuses let's say um, vacation holiday I classify it in the same section with uh, holiday apartments it, vacation apartments they were used the term was used more before Airbnb became popular so it's apartments that are normally in uh, regions with increased um, increased tourist touristic attraction or seaside or mountains area or like a chalet for example or an apartment on the seaside or cities with touristic um, uh, touristic attraction or old uh, ruins and things like that so um, is the same it enters in the same category um, it's just it's an older term than a holiday or uh, like short let let's say short 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 rentals um, all right student accommodation is uh, something that it's very popular right now and many many developers and investors are focusing on this particular area uh, it's it's apartments that are mostly one bedrooms or studios and they are purposely built for students uh, it has everything inside everything needed inside for them to have a comfortable stay and it's slightly cheaper than um, one bedroom let's say and and slightly more expensive than a room in a shared apartment um, it's mostly popular in capitals and uh, cities with university campuses or educational um, educational fields. It's a very, very large industry and it's a very interesting one as well, especially in England where the legislation allows you to charge six months in advance rent plus deposit, which is quite convenient because you're uh, secured from the payment straight away it doesn't apply in other countries like southern europe or third world countries so this is several rents that i am mentioning